There is other metadata to be added. For example, in the trees. Let's take a look at that tree. So we've got a, a tree block, and if I click the magnifying glass, I can see what's inside the tree block. The tree is named PALP1, and it's given a default title. I think I want to give it the title to match what is in the paper. And in the paper, the tree happens to be figure six. So the tree label will now be fig six. And the tree title, well, I could do the Ethereum orders. Sounds like a good title. Orders using Mc C. It's a single type tree, not a consensus. And it seems to be the preferred tree in this publication. So under tree quality, I'll call it the preferred tree. Notice that sometimes you'll be uploading alternative trees that are not your preferred tree or trees you actually know are wrong, in which case you should call them suboptimal trees. And this is my preferred tree. And in this case, be, although it's based on only one gene, I'm going to call it a species tree because I, I don't see any gene duplications within that gene tree. So it's, it's really not so much a gene tree as it is a species tree. We'll call it a species tree. It's a single type. And click update. So that's been updated. Also under matrices, I can call this um, nucleic acid for the matrix type. And I just realized that I, I don't really know the name of this gene very well. Indeed, it is the case that it's called C-MIC. So I will go back and re-edit that tree to properly reflect the name of the gene. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, uh, another thing to consider is that, well, if I look at this matrix, I click the magnifying glass to see what's inside. It, it just gives me a list of the taxon labels that are in the matrix. It tells me the dimensions. There are 1,389 characters, the format, and so forth. But clearly, uh, what's missing here is perhaps other metadata associated with uh, the characters that were uploaded. And we do have a way for you to upload more metadata that are, that are normally found in a Nexus file. So to do that, you first want to download or export a row segment template, that's what it's called. Click on that. And you can see it's created, this is a tab separated text file has been downloaded. And the best way to see it is in Excel. So I'm going to save as, put it on my desktop, I'll just call it row segment template, like that. And I'll use Excel to open up this downloaded file. And here it is. So there are a couple of um, number of columns. Uh, some important ones include the row taxon label. This identifies each row with the rows in the matrix. So we want to preserve that. That has to stay there. Uh, there's also a start index and an end index column. That, that indicates whether the metadata you're uploading applies to which sequences or which characters in the matrix. This means that if you have a matrix that's composed of several genes or you have sequences coming from different animals, then you can apply metadata to certain parts or subsections of rows in your matrix. Uh, but in this case, the entire row 
um, is going to receive the same metadata. So my start index is 1 and my end index is the very last character in the matrix. Now what can you put in here? Well, there's institutional acronym, collection code, and catalog number. That's for indicating the by repositories code that for, for a particular voucher specimen in a museum or even just a specimen that's in your laboratory. And what we want you to do is comply with the by repositories. I'm just going to go to that website. Uh, actually, I just looked at it back here. Registry of Biological repositories, so by repositories.org. Uh, this website stores the acronyms and collection codes for museums and special collections. And even if you haven't deposited your specimens in a museum, you can register your own non-institutional collection, which might be the freezer in the back of your lab and it will create a new acronym that identifies your collection and makes it easy to connect metadata resulting from your specimens with the specimens that are in your freezer in your laboratory. Okay, that's what the institutional acronym and the collection code is about. And then we have other things like GenBank accession numbers, other types of accession numbers, latitude, longitude of the collected specimen, the elevation of the specimen, country, state, locality, notes, and so forth. So it happens that I have already a set of metadata that I could upload and I put it here on my desktop. Here it is. And the metadata, metadata that I have is primarily the GenBank accession number for my specimens, or the specimens associated with this um, matrix. And we can see that um, if we compare the taxon labels as they are in my metadata Excel file with the row segment template that was downloaded, I think if we compare those two, we should see that they map up perfectly. They're both, they happen to be in alphabetical order. If they don't map up perfectly, you can sort both of them so that they do. And now it's easy to just copy and paste. So for example, here, I can just copy the GenBank accession numbers, and put them in this column, like that. And I could copy, let's say, these institutional acronym collection and catalog number, put them in there. And there are some uh, rows that don't get any metadata. For example, this one. And um, this one. this one, and this one, and I could delete these rows because they're not really needed. I don't really need to upload rows that don't contain any metadata. So here's my file. It's ready to upload. So I'll save it. I'll make sure that I still save it as a tab-separated text file. Right? I'll replace the one I have. And we should be good to go then. We'll see if this works. Okay, so now I'm ready to upload my metadata. I choose the row segment template file that has now been edited to include GenBank accession numbers. I click upload. And and now what it's done is it has um, taken the top few rows of that file and it shows the headers too. 
and it, it allows me to say what is what I'd like to upload. So for example here I want to upload the row tax on label. That's important to match the rows in the Excel file that's being uploaded with the rows in the matrix. I want to have my start index and end index to say what the span of characters um, these data should be attached to. And then I've got some institutional acronym, collection code, and the catalog number, and then the GenBank accession number. And that's it. The only data that I'm actually uploading. So now that I've selected which columns I want to upload, I can just click some. And there, it now shows that 16 rows were successfully uploaded. And we can take a look at them here and make any modifications that are needed. So here, for example, is the catalog number for the TTU Institute acronym and collection code. And in most cases, you have a Jane Bank ID indicated. So that's been uploaded. Click update if I've made any changes. And now I can return to my home. So in summary, I have uh, uploaded matrices, trees, created analyses that link the two. I've included metadata in my matrices to indicate where the specimens came from or the GenBank accession numbers. And um, you'll notice that in the summary page there is a URL here or sort of a URI. This is an identifier that identifies your data, at least at the study level. Uh, please cite this in your manuscript or use it in other databases to refer to your data set or on your website and it's a permanent number uh, and it's a globally unique identifier that actually resolves to a set of RDF metadata that says something about your submission. If on the other hand your submission is, uh, is not yet ready to be published but you want to give special access to reviewers, there is a reviewer access URL. You can email this to your editor, the editor of your journal, who can pass that on to the reviewers of your paper. And that way they could ac have access to your data. They can't modify it, but they can look at it and um, make that part of the review process for your manuscript. Otherwise, um, you can return to your list of submissions and if you think you're ready to have your data published and made public on the tree base, you click change to ready state like this and uh, clicking the submit button. Well now your, your submission is now in the ready state and TreeBase staff will be alerted to the fact that there is a ready state submission that wants to go public. We will look at your data. If we think it's complete and there are no problems or mistakes, we will toggle it to published. And then uh, after, at that point, uh, the rest of the world can access your data.